tab interface, the first thing we want to do is uh, on the query edit tab or tab page, we want to put a button that says uh, run query. And this really is along the lines of continuing to create the infrastructure uh, in terms of the uh, C-sharp controls before we actually start putting in SQL and ADO.NET code. And we want to give the button a meaningful name like BTN Run Query. <coughs> and then put text on the button uh, of Run Query so the user knows what it does. And now if we want to pop up a new form, the first thing we have to do is create a new form. So go up to the uh, Solution Explorer and to the uh, Add New Item and select Windows Form and give the form a name of uh, Query Results. And this will actually create a new form like the FRM MAME we created in the, the last uh, uh, lesson. If you go up to the design view of the uh, new query result.cs, we'll expand this new form out and just give it a label that uh, lets us know that this form has popped up. So the label is, this is uh, the result of a query. And now we want to go back to our original form we created, the FRM main. Well, first we want to give a uh, query result form a meaningful name, so in terms of Hungarian notation. So we call it FRM query result. And then we go back to the click event handler in our main form and say FRM query result, which is the name of the object of our new form and instantiate it with the name of QR and say equals new and once again FRM query result. And then all we have to do is say QR dot show for the method for the form in order for this to display. All this code once again is within the run query button on the uh, the query uh, edit tab. So if we compile and run this and we go to the query edit tab we notice the button is there. If we click, click on the listing tab there's no button. So these are indeed separate pages. So go down to the Query Edit button, hit Run Query, and there we go. The, uh, the, this is a result of a query pops up. Uh, this is actually extremely useful to be able to bring up a new tab or bring up a new form, especially if we have a complex application where there's really not a ro enough room on one form we need to have multiple interacting forms. And in the next lesson, we'll actually talk about how to get these forms to interact. Right now we have two totally independent forms. And although we click on a button and bring up the second form, right now there's no way for us to communicate information back and forth between these forms, which in terms of getting query results is absolutely vital. So in the next lesson, Alexis uh, 03, we talk about how to get uh, multiple forms to interact and talk with each other, communicate with each other. Well, I hope you uh, learned a lot from this lesson, and remember to always focus and learn a lot, whatever you get into.